Jessica from the future popping in here. I've finished the pattern already and I wanted to let you know that I totally screwed up on the sizing. You'll see later in the video the troubleshooting of the sizing, but essentially I ended up taking out five inches from the waistband, which is a ton. That obviously caused some fit issues and I go through the whole process. I have a 30 inch waist. I chose to make a size medium. In hindsight, that was a poor choice. Honestly, I think next time I'm gonna have to make a size extra small in order for it to fit me. So with that being said, if your waist is smaller than like a 28, I probably wouldn't recommend this pattern to you. Anyways, you'll see all the troubleshooting in the video. I just wanted to let you know in advance. Now let's get into cutting some fabric. Cut out all my pieces and now we're going to attach all the fusible interfacing. We're now going to prep and sew the darts. The instructions say to sew a straight line down the dart and then go an extra two centimeters and make it a little bit curved. That way it's not too pointy when it actually lays on your body. Quick tip of advice, which I also shared in my bisque trousers tutorial, which I'll link up above, is to use some sort of guide when sewing a dart. I like to use this flimsy pink ruler and I match up the edge and where the dart is supposed to end. And then I just follow it super closely till the very end. Then when you get to the edge of your dart, instead of back tacking, leave enough to tie a knot. Now that our darts are in place, we're going to iron them to the center back. Now that the pressing is done, we're matching up the crotch curve and we're going to sew it at a one centimeter seam allowance and then we're going to serge the edges. trousers is all prepped and now we're going to work on the front side of the trousers. We're going to take those notches that we made and we're going to match them and then we're going to sew a straight line from the notch all the way to the dot and that'll happen four times since there's two pleats on either side. Okay pleats are in and now we're going to press them towards the center front. Now we're going to take the pocket bags and we're going to serge all the way around this edge here and we're also going to take the pocket shields and serge all the way around this edge. Okay, next we're going to stitch the pocket bags to each front piece. Here's the front piece and here's the pocket bag and we're going to stitch all the way along here. Then we're going to fold it open, press, and understitch. Here's what that understitch edge looks like once it's all finished. Here's what the front piece is looking like now. I've added the other piece of the pocket on top and we're gonna sew a straight stitch all the way around here, but we're not gonna stop here. We're actually gonna continue going to the top. As you can see on the back side, this is where that edge is. And then once we flip it over to the other side, it's gonna make a lot of sense why we did that. Here's what it's looking like all stitched together. Now I'm gonna flip it underneath and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I've clipped everything down so you can see it really easily. What we're gonna do now is a stitch really close to the edge that holds this piece down as well as this piece and this piece. Okay, the front panels are all done. Here's what that stitch looks like that we just put in. It's nice and close to the edge. One thing to note is that when you put the stitch in, you wanna make sure that the pleats are still facing the correct direction. Moving on to the zipper fly, we're about to prep all of the pieces. We're gonna start by serging both of these edges here. We're also gonna serge this edge and this edge. Here's what those serged pieces look like, and now we're gonna move on to these pieces. We're gonna match these pieces up, and then we're gonna sew all the way around here with a straight stitch. Now that the straight stitch is in place, we're gonna cut out little Vs all the way through here so that it's easy to flip inside out. Now we're gonna press it. The last thing to do to prep this piece is to take this edge and serge it. 
Okay, here's what those pieces look like now, and this is where they're gonna end up living. We're gonna start with this piece and we're gonna sew along here, and then we're gonna flip it open and press it. Now this piece is gonna get understitched. Now that we have this piece in place, we're gonna clip into this seam here so that it can fold under, and then we're gonna top stitch all the way down. That top stitch is in, and now we're gonna open this back up. We're gonna line the zipper up pretty close to this edge here, and we're gonna pin it down, and then we're gonna sew the right side into place. Just for quick reference, here's what that looks like, and now we're gonna sew over here. Okay, now that the zipper is stitched down, we're gonna flip this under and we're gonna do a top stitch around that curve. There are a few ways to do this top stitch so that it looks nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna baste the piece down, then I'm gonna do my top stitch, and then I'm gonna take the basting out. You could also take your pattern piece, put it on top, trace it, and then top stitch over that tracing. But then of course there's a visible line, which means you'd have to wash the pants before you wear them. I don't really wanna wash the pants before I wear them, which is why I'm opting to baste. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is attach this piece here. This edge is gonna get stitched down to this edge. So you'll just line these up at the edge here and then top stitch the zipper all the way down. Here's what the front panel is looking like now that we've attached all the pieces here. We're now gonna match the zipper up with the other side and we're gonna make a notch where the shield ends. Okay, now this folded under edge is going to be put on top of here and then we're gonna top stitch it down all the way to the bottom. Just for quick reference, here's what this looks like and we're just gonna top stitch all the way down here. The fly is now all stitched together, so both sides are attached. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this crotch edge. I press the seam under, now we're gonna pin it to this side and we're just gonna top stitch all the way down to the bottom. I think I'm actually gonna do a double top stitch and then we'll end right about in here. You do wanna make sure that your stitch goes a little bit higher than this end piece, so we're gonna go like four or five stitches up here and then we're gonna turn and then we're gonna come all the way back down. Okay, it's ready for the top stitch. The front pieces are all done. Here's what that top stitch ended up looking like. It's really nice. So admittedly, I didn't follow the directions for the fly piece, but I wanted to try something new and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. There are lots of different ways to do zipper flies, so you can do whatever works best for you, but this is how I did it today. The front and the back pieces are ready to be attached to each other at the side seams. We're gonna match up both of the side seams and then we're gonna sew all the way down. <laughs> Okay, so I thought that now would be a good time to try them on and I'm glad that I did because they are huge. I think what I'm gonna do is take them in at the back seam. There's quite a bit that needs to be taken out, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, here's the original stitch and here's how far I had to take it in for it to actually fit. That's two and a half inches out of each side, which is quite a lot. I wouldn't normally expect that. I made a size medium and I have a 30 inch waist, so I figured that that would be pretty on par. But as you've seen, I had to take it in quite a lot. So hopefully that's helpful for you if you choose to make these pants. Sizing aside, I'm super excited with how this is going and I'm about to search the side seams. Okay, things are starting to look good here. Now we're gonna do a bar tack at the bottom and the top of the pocket. For my bar tack, I made the width three and the length 0.5, and here's how it turned out. It's probably longer than it needs to be, but I'm not worried about it. Now we're gonna move on to the inner crotch. We're gonna match up these two crotch pieces here, and then we're gonna sew all the way around the crotch. So taking in the seam at the crotch ended up causing some other fit issues in the leg. When I pinned the inseam together, it wasn't laying properly, so I kinda need to troubleshoot that. I put the trousers on my mannequin to see if I can get the fit a little bit better. Here's what they're looking like inside out on my mannequin. As you can see, there's a ton of extra fabric in the crotch area. It's not really a drop crotch style, so I think that the fit is just completely off, and I don't exactly know what we're gonna do about that yet. Okay, I made an adjustment, and they're starting to look okay. I ended up actually sewing this inner seam together, and I'll show you what that looks like from the inside. The seam is still pulling towards the front, which I don't really love, so, so I'm gonna continue to make these as pants, and then if I get to the very end when I'm ready to hem and I don't like where that line is sitting, I'm just gonna 
crop them into shorts. This top side is the front of the pants. I matched up the crotch seam here and I took out three and a half inches from this back side because it was just way too big. Now I'm gonna cut and serge all the way around and then I think I'm gonna press it and I'm gonna top stitch it so that it stays where I want it to. I ended up top stitching that inner seam and I also top stitched this side seam. I pinned where I think the seam would be at the ankles. They're looking okay, but I don't know if you can see this inner seam is being pulled towards the front and the side seam is really far to the back. Also, since I had to make so many adjustments, the legs aren't as wide as I wanted them to be. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Again, I might crop them into shorts, but I'm gonna finish the waistband and see how that goes. So because the waistband ended up needing to be smaller, I'm pinning it on to make sure that all the seams line up. Here's the side seam here so I'm gonna add the seam allowance and then I'm gonna chop it off here and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the two front pieces and then I'll attach the pieces together. Okay so I got all these side seams to match up and then I sewed the waistband down. I'm gonna try them on now and make sure that they're fitting how I think they're supposed to. Okay things are looking pretty good everything's sitting how it's supposed to so now I'm gonna prep the other side of the waistband and we're gonna sew it down. Okay, the second waistband piece is prepped and now we're going to attach them together. I'm just gonna put pins in it all the way around. Once the pins are in, we're gonna start sewing a straight stitch here and then go up and around. Okay, the waistband is all attached and we're getting really close finally. What we're gonna do next is clip this edge here so that it's easier to flip inside out. Then we're gonna flip everything inside out and press it so it looks super nice. And then all we have to do is stop stitch. Okay, the waistband is pressed and pinned and now I'm gonna baste all the way around and then I'm gonna top stitch. Basting is in place, and so now we're just going to top stitch all the way around. I think instead of a button, I'm going to do a clasp, but I don't have a clasp on hand, so that'll probably have to wait until tomorrow when I can pick one up. Next, I'm going to figure out where I want the pant leg to sit, and then I'm going to cut it and hem it. I just gave them a little chop, and they're sitting at a good length. I'm going to serge around the edges, fold it under, and top stitch it. almost done. The only thing left is the class. I'll go ahead and pick up one tomorrow and then we'll finish and I'll show you the final product. Okay, I'm back. It's the next day and I picked up some hooks. These are what I ended up finding. It's not exactly what I was looking for, but I think it'll do the trick. I'm just going to add a few to the waistband and hopefully it works how I'm expecting it to. Okay guys, pants are done. Time for the reveal. for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.